Hello, I'm Jamila Musaiwa, an international social etiquette consultant and author of Etiquette Books. Etiquette, the least you need to know, and afternoon tea etiquette. My books are only available in English language and hardcover copy, and you can order a copy on my website www.jamilamusaiwa.com. I'll link it down below here as well in the description box below. If you're interested in learning about etiquette, make sure to subscribe to my channel. As well, you can purchase my online dining etiquette course available on my website with subtitles in English, Spanish and Arabic. It's an hour and 30 minute full course explaining everything from A to Z about a Western formal dining etiquette. Today's video, by the setup, you can already guess what I'm going to talk about. It was one of the highly requested videos that took me a really long time to master of my courage and feel free in front of a camera to show myself without any makeup on. So in today's video, I'll show you how I do my very quick daily signature makeup look. So before I get started with my daily makeup look, which is super easy and very simple to follow, I want to show you some of the basics that I have around me. And first things first is a cup of warm coffee or tea. Early in the morning, I make myself a cup of coffee or tea and then I bring it to my makeup station so I can sip on it while I'm doing my makeup. It feels, it makes me feel energized, makes me feel happy and warm inside. So I always have something to drink with me while I'm doing my makeup. And actually for me, this whole process is very uh, calming. It's a, a small spa session, so to speak, where I take the time to devote just to myself and focus on beautifying myself. And another important aspect for me is making sure that I have something nice smelling. So it's either a candle or usually it's an incense stick. I have a huge selection to choose from. These are just a few that I have with me right now. But uh, before getting started, I smell every single one of the batches and think, what is my mood today? What do I want to smell like today? So I put it on. I have selected one already here. I will light it on before I get my makeup done. And then I'll remove it to the other side so that it doesn't get into the way of the camera. But usually it will be somewhere around me so I can inhale it while I'm doing my makeup. So these are the main rituals that I have. A cup of something warm to drink and an incense stick. Light it on and I'm ready to make my makeup. Next thing that I always have with me are these kind of hair clips that help to put my hair back. The one especially that's falling onto my face. So I'll just do like this. And then do the same on the other side, especially after I get a blow dry. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, my hair is still kept the way it was done. So it's not ruined with a hair tie or something like that. Um, then I have a mirror. Usually I have a bigger mirror, but this is just a small one that I have with me right now for the shooting purposes. I always have wet wipes with me, a box of tissues just in case I need to clean my hands. And I have this marble station where I put only the essentials that I'm going to use so that I don't waste time on selecting what I'm going to do on my face on that particular day. So I keep my makeup routine very simple, basic, so I can follow it easily on a daily basis. So to get started, I'm going to use this Caudalie water, which is a beautifying water. You can use it as before the makeup and even after the makeup to set it up or during throughout the day just to make sure that you, you know, um, bring a little bit of luminosity to your face, especially when your makeup has kind of dried out throughout the day. So I'll start with this. And and it smells amazing. I wish I could explain what it smells like, but I love how clean and green the smell is. After this water, I always make sure that I apply some kind of a daily cream under my eyes and on my skin as well, because my skin is super dry and very, very thin. If I don't do any kind of a cream before I put on my makeup, it's going to stick on my face and going to create some lines like a cakey look. And you'll see from the products that I'm using, most of them are in a form of liquid. So I practically don't use anything that is powder because my skin is super, super dry. I opt for something that is liquid so it can slide on my skin and kind of um, make it more even and uh, won't create any lines on it. So next I'm going to use, I usually use on a daily basis, either the CeraVe cream, which has retinol in it, but also SPF 50, or I go for this Shiseido cream, which is wrinkle smoothing uh, daily emulsion. Today I'm going to use this because I feel like my skin has been super dry lately and this emulsion is very gentle on the skin. It doesn't 
um, create any um, like it doesn't have any leftover on your face so it's easily absorbed on the skin so I do a little bit of this and then apply it on my all over my face and also never forget my neck even with the texture of it you can tell how smooth it is and it's easily dries which is great when you're doing your daily makeup so you don't have to wait for too long for the cream to dry so I apply always on my neck as well and remaining on my hands I don't waste any product next for my eyes or under my eyes I have two kind of uh, cream the both of them by are by Embryolis which is usually a pharmacy product in France I don't know when you can, where you can order this uh, online but you can always buy it in Europe in pharmacies so this is in a form of a stick like that I usually put it into my a little makeup bag uh, that I carry around it's usually easily applied like this as a stick under your eyes so you don't have to actually touch your face with your fingers especially if they are dirty but uh, here since I'm at home my hands are clean I'm using this one it's called Soin Regard Lift Intense it creates a lifting effect under your eye again very easily absorbed which is very important for me I do mix it a little bit in between my fingers and then apply it under my eyes like that tap it underneath and sometimes even over like that and then the rest again on my hand another important item for me before I get my makeup done is this I've shown this already many many times are this Lumify eye drops which help you open up the gaze and they kind of indeed lumify your eyes um, so I'll add one drop or two drops in each eye it instantly opens up the gaze and brings life to your eyes when you are tired I actually reapply it throughout the day if for example I did something in the morning and I have an event to attend in the evening I'll make sure that I reapply it so my eyes look fresh so this is everything I do before I get started with my makeup so what I'm going to show you in my daily makeup look is something that I use pretty much every single day unless on a certain shooting day I might opt for a different kind of coverage or different kind of lip liners but these are the basics of my makeup and uh, the way I approach makeup is to really just enhance my strong features and then disguise the ones that I'm not very happy about um, I don't want to say that mask them but kind of disguise and make them look a little bit more um, fresh in a way for example underneath my eyes I have really dark circles and uh, I like to cover them so they're not so visible but I don't try to do like full coverage on because then they turn cakey throughout the day um, then I have a little bit of sunspots over here I try to remove them with laser but they got a little bit lighter in their shade but they're still visible um, and I have some really light spots on my face right now that I will cover again but I will not do it intensely there are no there's no contouring in my makeup there are pretty much no brushes in my makeup it's very basic but it keeps it easy on a daily basis to just do it very quickly and then look fresh throughout the day so I've shown this in my video my ultimate favorite Shiseido 50 SPF I use it summer winter fall spring doesn't matter throughout the whole season again unless I'm doing a video shoot or a, a photo shoot I will always only use this on a daily basis as a way to cover my face um, to do a cover up for my face so it has SPF and has a little bit of tint in it so there's a color in it and you can uh, choose any kind of shade I think this is the light one there's also a medium one and there's also a darker one so you shake a little bit and then I mix it in my hands before I apply it to my face the reason I mix it always with my hands is because I've heard that when you mix it with your hands the warmth of your hands helps um, to then heat up the, the the coverage and makes it easily applicable to your face so I pretty much applied as a cream on my face I don't know if this is really the correct way of doing it but it works for me and has worked always and it's easy to carry with you when you are traveling it's a small package since I'm not using any brushes it's also easy for me to just have a very little makeup bag when I'm traveling I also apply it underneath my eyes again I'm not sure if it's the right way of doing it uh, but it works and 
helps me to not get new freckles that I really don't like. I know freckles are something that could be sometimes in fashion, but it's not something that I personally like. I do a little bit over my eye as well, on the eyelids and around my nose. So as you can tell, it hasn't really covered up anything that much, but then I'm going to use some concealer to cover the rest. So I'll use a little bit of wet wipe to clean my fingers before I proceed to the next stage. So let me take a sip of tea before I continue. Next, I'm going to proceed with my eyebrows and my eyes. I always start with eyebrows. Again, I don't know if this is the right way of doing it, but it works for me because once I've set my eyebrows, I know how I want to do my eyes. So I think eyebrows are such an important part of the face. They really frame everything. So once you have it all set up, you can then work on the rest of your face. So the three essential products that I'm using are all from Benefit. There's this um, brow powder, and there's this primer for the eyebrows, and there's this brow gel. And I always also use a little brush like that that is clean. First I brush them, then I design them. So first I'll just lift my eyebrows up to create a nice shape and only once I've done with this I'll take this and fill the rest of the gaps so anywhere that I have hair missing is where I fill it in I get asked a lot about where and how I get my eyebrows done if they're microbladed or not I haven't microbladed my eyebrows I never did anything on them radical I just try not to pluck them too much and I wasn't allowed to do as, as when I was younger. Um, I had very little like say about what I want to do with my eyebrows. <laughs> so even at my wedding I had quite wide and thick eyebrows. Now looking back at my wedding pictures I realized they're a little bit too thick for my face. But now I'm actually thankful that I wasn't allowed to plug a lot because now I have thicker and fuller eyebrows. So I just miss in the places where I just don't have any hair growing. And we all have that part. Not every single brow is the same shape. So there are a little bit different. There is some hair growing on this side, but there is nothing growing here. So I'll just have to fill out to make them look a little bit more even. Okay. Slightly more even, I think. It's very difficult to tell using this mirror. But then... I'll use this primer. Sometimes I just use the primer and then the other days I use both primer and the gel. It kind of helps you create a thicker look on your eyebrows. I don't know if you can tell it from, from the camera. And then I just used a brow gel, a clear brow gel to fix the rest of it. Um, because my eyebrows tend to fall down throughout the day, the hair just goes down and this helps it fix it and keep it in place okay now that I've done my eyebrows I'm going to move to my eyes and the palette that I'm using there are actually two that I use there is this one by Dior which has all the brown and all the beige shades and then there's another one that has all the pink and purple uh, shades you've seen some of the videos where I have more pinkish purplish look makeup and then there are some where I have more brown today I've opted for the brown one um, this you can tell are the colors that I use the most I don't use these colors as much because they don't look really good on me because I have a warm undertone I've done a video on undertones make sure to check it out I'll explain which colors look better on you so I avoid all these colors only on certain evening occasions I can add a little bit of glittery colors here and there but these are the three ones that I use the most so this is just the basic beige one that I'm going to apply on my eyelids to kind of help them keep keep them dry this is the only part of my face that I'd like to keep dry because I have kind of a bit of a hood on, over here on my eye so if I'm using any kind of eyeliner throughout the day as the day prolongs it's going to kind of slide throughout my eye like everywhere so to avoid that I use a little bit more powdery product overlay on my eyelids 
so it can help me keep the rest of my eye eyeshadow intact throughout the day and just apply all of this all over actually i usually do it with my fingers but for this video purposes i decided to steal a little brush from my daughter's makeup kit i mean it's a kid's makeup kit but this is the brush that came along so i took it from her usually i do everything with my fingers i just find it easier and it helps blend it everything much easier than I think with a brush. So you can tell I'm not very good at using a brush. Okay. I use the lighter shades on the front of my eye. So up until here in the middle, I use more whiter shades. And then I'm going to use a brown one over here on the side. I will clean everything that is not supposed to be there with either a cotton pad or <laughs> a wet wipe. to bring the mirror a little bit closer to me so I can actually see my eyes. I only do the, the darker shade from the center of my eye to the side of it. I used to do it all along from the inner side of my eye up until there up until the end and then when I was started looking at the pictures that when I was a student it looked so heavy and I used black color I used a black eyeliner from the front to the end and I had thicker eyebrows and all of that together just made my eyes look so much heavier now that I have a little bit thinner eyebrow and I'm just using browner shade and only from the middle to the end it makes my eyes look much lighter and much more alive I think in a way so I hope they're equal. This is what I'm seeing in the mirror, but it looks like they're equal. I will then proceed with an eyeliner. So I'm done with eyeshadow. If I need a little bit extra, I'll add it once I'm done with an eyeliner. I'll do an eyeliner and the one I have here has two sides. So this is by NYX. So this part of it is an eyeliner, again in, in a brown color. And this back side is actually a little brush that helps you blend in the liner that you have put on. So I find it very easy to apply. It has a really thin edge, so it's easy to just, you just do a line and it creates a really beautiful, uh, correct wing. And then you can use the brush to just blend it in. So if I'm doing a shoot, I'll usually go with a little bit of the eyeliner as well. But on a bit daily basis, I just usually just go with the eyeshadow. Uh, eyeshadow just makes the makeup look a lot more natural I think than the eyeliner for a daily basis and as well it just it's easy to reapply throughout the day without creating some kind of like a heavy look on your eyes but when you're shooting you have to go a little bit extra because camera really takes away the natural beauty so camera loves when it's a lot of makeup a lot of light a lot of things uh, so then I'm going to use this little brush here to just brush it off. I was told I'm not supposed to pull my eye, but this is just the way I've been accustomed to doing this. And um, unfortunately, unlearning is a lot more difficult than learning. Create a little bit of wing, not too crazy. And same here. Okay. And this is basically what I do for my eye. I'll have to check with the mirror to see if everything is correct, but it looks nice from here. Again, I just want to apologize in advance if my eye makeup doesn't look even because I'm not used to using the small mirror. I'm usually used to doing it in front of a big mirror, but I'll try my best to just explain what the technique looks like. 
Once I'm done with my eyes, I move on to an under eye coverage, which is the NYX that I'm using. Uh, I use it as an under eye as well. Any kind of, um, so to speak, spots that I might have on my face, I cover them up with this um, coverage. So I'll just do a little bit under my eyes. I try to not apply too much because when I do too much, again, because my skin is so dry, I do a little bit under my eyebrows too. Uh, it becomes cakey throughout the day. I do a little bit around my nose, this red spots, red spotted area that we all have. So I have a red spot here, I'll apply a little bit here, and whatever is remaining, I'll apply to the red spots that I have over here as well. I don't try to hide uh, these spots, though I'm not really a huge fan of them, but I just leave them on because they're just part of me and I have a lot of freckles on my face as well that I got rid of some of them but there's still some that are remaining and I don't try to cover them up because it's just part of my skin. So I'll just do a little bit here underneath my nose, the areas that tend to get red and then underneath the eyebrows. So when you do underneath your eyebrows, it kind of opens up the gaze. It makes your eyebrows look thicker because it creates a shape and form. And it also kind of helps for my eyeshadow makeup to stick in some ways to just not go all the way up. You'll see how with under eye coverage, like the whole face just changes. My tired look just transforms into me looking a lot more alive. I go all the way to the edge of my eye because I have this darkness here as well. So I try to cover up as well. I might add a little bit more actually. I've realized that when I add a little bit here on the edge, it just creates a lifted eye look, so to speak. And if I have a lot on one finger, I just switch the finger so I just don't apply too much product on my face. So everything that remains and then switch finger so that I don't use too much product. Okay, so that's the coverage that I have. Again, you can tell that it's still visible but not as much in your face but it has covered just enough. So if you're looking for something that's full coverage, maybe these products will not help you but if you're looking for something that's daily fresh and no makeup makeup look, then these are the products that I highly recommend. Next, we're moving down to my cheeks. I do not use any bronzer because I have a white skin and a cool undertone. I mistakenly said warm undertone, so excuse me, I'm cool undertone. So bronzy colors, brown colors, um, like brown, orangish colors don't look good on me. They make my skin look tired um, and they don't enhance my features at all. So I don't use any bronzer. I don't use any blush usually because I'm a person that gets red cheeks immediately when I'm warm, if I'm shy, I just naturally tend to blush. So I don't use any uh, blush, but I do use a gentle uh, glow highlighter. This is by Chanel. Actually, I've recently purchased it before I was using some other products, but I really like this one because it's super light. It's not so sparkly, so it's great for daily use. Um, it's not perhaps something that you would use, let's say, if you're going out for for evening and you need something much stronger, then you would probably opt for something that has more spark in it. This one has a very creamy texture, like, like an emulsion, and it's very light, easily absorbed, and it just gives you a little bit of natural glow. It's not crazy in any way, and I like applying it on my cheeks like a blush. I don't know if this is the correct way of applying it. There are probably some correct techniques of doing it. I'm no makeup guru, but for me, this works. Uh, so I just add a little bit on the sides like that, just to create a little bit of glow to my skin. And then I usually, if I'm wearing something that has an open decollete like this, 
This is something you probably have seen in the pictures and have asked me before. This is something I use as well to apply on my collarbones and they help them just glow a little bit here as well. Just trying to avoid the microphone and then just a little bit. If I need some more, I'll apply some more. And if I want to, for it to stick better, then I'll first apply a body oil that also has a little bit of glow in it. And then I'll apply this on top. So together they really create that glowy, nice look. But that's for evening. I usually don't do it for daily events. So this would be just a daily application of this glow. So now that we are done with everything, the remaining part and the one that gets ask the most what are the lip products that I'm using, what is the lipstick color, what are, what are the products that I'm using to make my lips look that natural color. So I actually, only for this video, I handpicked the three liners, but I have a whole collection of liners and I usually don't remember anything that I've applied that day. I just go with the flow or whatever I feel like doing. I don't pick on the majority of times, I do not use lipstick because lipstick tends to wear away from throughout the day if you're drinking something, eating something, but lip liners stay tend to stay a lot. And I also don't like the lipsticks that stay for a really long time unless it's a red lipstick. That's the one I go for. So on a daily basis, I just use a mix of lip liners. And the way I apply it is I try to not go with a rough line so i create some kind of like a, a shadow with a lip liner and then if i think it's a lot i'll just clean the rest to create that natural look this is one of my favorite liners it's number seven uh, the brand is called and it i'm not sure what the color is but it's kind of beige brownish and it's different on different skin tone so i usually go over the lips over the lip line like that. And then I could just leave it like that or I could smudge it with my finger so that the line is not very clear. You don't actually see the whole line. And the remainder I just apply to the inside of my lip. So I could go like this. I could then, for some video purposes, I could add a different color and go again on top to the sides. And then it has a little brush here, but I tend to use my fingers because I find it much easier to blend. there is this and then I'll add another color I like building up the colors because then it's like a surprise every time so with this color I go a little bit of in the inside as well and then a little bit outside I might go again back with this liner in with the one that I started because now it's too pinky for me I want it a little bit more of a natural lip color so I'll mix this kind of brownish color with the pink one before I haven't yet found a single liner that really is the color of my lips so I have to blend it to create the kind of a color I want to create And then to add a little bit more spark and glow to it, I use this Laneige lip mask as a lip line lip balm on daily use. There's nothing remaining almost there, but just a little bit to give that healthy glow. So this would be my daily makeup. 
I'm not sure how it looks on camera right now because for the video shoot I'll do my makeup a little bit more intense so the videos that you see usually with me make with my makeup on it's this but a little bit more enhanced because camera again takes away a lot of it uh, versus on a daily basis if I'm out and about with my friends and the photos that I usually post on Instagram with me doing my daily things I usually have just this makeup on so now that I'm done with my makeup look, sometimes when I have a little bit too much of lip liner, I will take a little bit of the tissue and then kiss it so that it's not too much, uh, it's not too bright. So it gives a little bit of a faded look. I'll take away the rest. And now it's very natural, like I have nothing on my lips. So now that the makeup is done, I can finally take this off. Um, Fix my hair, put my jewelry on and just be ready to go out and conquer the world. Actually, this makeup is very easy to do. It takes me about five minutes to do it because I'm not using any brush. I'm just really quick with it. However, it took me a little bit longer time here on the video because I was explaining every single stage. And my suggestion to everyone watching and wanting to create this elegant signature look is try the products Find the color that works for you, find the products that work perfectly for you, stock up on them because usually our favorite products are re easily sold out and it's then difficult to find them. And then keep your makeup station just the minimum basic things that you're using for every day because when you reach out to them on a daily basis, it's just easy to find them and easy to use them. I've minimized it and has really saved a lot of time for me and I'm never too lazy to apply makeup. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. Please let me know what are some of your favorite products that I've shown or maybe your own favorite products. What are your tips and tricks into simplifying your makeup look and uh, please let me know what are some video suggestions that you have for me and I'll be more than happy to shoot new videos for you. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!